Hello only me, just before we started I want to give a quick shout out to Skillshare who we are happy to be working with here on Who Culture to help you access all sorts of amazing classes, but more on that later. On stage in Melbourne, Australia, Christopher Eccleston spoke about the possibility of his return to the role of the Ninth Doctor for the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. Eccleston denounced the idea of multi-doctor stories as a cash grab and said that if he was to return it would be as a solo doctor. It marks a significant shift in his original assertion that he'd return to the role when hell freezes over, but it also feels like his return to the TV series is as far away as ever. The circumstances of Eccleston's departure from The Who Show is something of an ongoing mystery in Doctor Who. Originally, it was assumed to be a simple case of a decision not to renew his contract. After all, he wasn't known for sticking around in popular series for long. His character in Cracker was memorably written out after one season, for example. In the years that have followed, however, more information has come out via interviews, unofficial sources and Eccleston's own autobiography. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with Who Culture and let's take a look at the true story behind Christopher Eccleston's Doctor Who exit. Number 9, 2003, he's back and it's about time. In 2003, the 40th anniversary year, it was announced that Doctor Who would be returning to the BBC with a brand new series. Twice. The Paul Cornell scripted Richard E. Grant starring Scream of the Schalke was announced in July as a new animated era for the show. It was a bold new vision, pairing an emotionally traumatised Doctor with a robotic master as a sort of buddy duo. Schalke's thunder was soon stolen by a bigger, bolder announcement, however. Two months later, in September, it was announced that Doctor Who would be coming back to BBC One as a proper television series. It would be creatively spearheaded by acclaimed screenwriter Russell T Davies. Between 26th of September 2003 and the 26th of March 2005, Doctor Who fandom was reinvigorated by the possibilities of the new series. Discussing potential casting, sharing various production rumours and set photos on message boards, and renewing their dormant Doctor Who Appreciation Society memberships. It was a very exciting time to be a Doctor Who fan. Number 8. Eccleston is cast for Doctor Who's Second Coming Names thrown around as a potential ninth Doctor included Tom Baker and Judy Dench. As Russell T Davies nodded along to these suggestions, he was harbouring a desire to cast Hugh Grant in the role. Quite what the battle-scarred Doctor would be like in the hands of Grant is anyone's guess, as Grant declined the offer, something he's said to have later regretted after seeing how successful the show became. A name that nobody had even considered was Christopher Eccleston, an actor known for his work in grounded, realistic seminal dramas like Our Friends in the North and Cracker. He was not an actor known for the lightness of touch many expected from the character of the Doctor. In an interview to announce his casting, Eccleston noted that, I don't think he's going to be as eccentric and foppish as he was in some of his incarnations. Eccleston was cast after he emailed Davies to register his interest. Having previously worked on The Second Coming with RTD, Eccleston told the press he was excited to be working with him again. Number 7. Filming begins with Aliens of London with Eccleston cast as the Doctor and former pop star and full-time actor Billy Piper cast as his companion Rose, the 21st century incarnation entered production on the 18th of July 2004. Filming at Cardiff Royal Infirmary, doubling for Albion Hospital, Eccleston's first scenes as the Doctor was him chasing the space pig down the corridor. And there's nothing more Doctorish than that. Alongside the filming of the series, a companion show Doctor Who Confidential was documenting the production and provided valuable insights into Eccleston's brief time on the show. In his interviews, he clearly grasps the character, noting the Doctor's open-mindedness as a great quality for a television hero, while also highlighting his brutal alien pragmatism. Eccleston and Piper also clearly get on very well together and are regularly seen smiling and laughing between takes in the short glimpses of filming. In his autobiography, I Love the Bones of You, Eccleston reflects on his working relationship with Piper, stating, What truly amazes me is I know how nervous Billy was at the start. She thought I was some big serious performer and she didn't have the belief in herself as an actor. She proved herself, of course, to be way better than any of the rest of us. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you that we have partnered with Skillshare. And for those of you who don't know, Skillshare is a huge online learning community with thousands of classes in, 
illustration, video, design, photography, cooking, crafts, and pretty much anything else that you can think of. Now, we are absolutely delighted to be working with Skillshare here on Who Culture because we've actually used some of their classes to help us with our own videos here on the channel. For example, Thomas Frank's Productivity for Creatives. Now, with the world still being a little bit crazy, it can sometimes be hard to stay creative and avoid burnout. But this class was absolutely amazing. It helped us to keep a creative mindset, to build up some really good creative habits, and even just to optimize the workspace in order for you to be as productive as you can be. Now, we really want you to have the same experience as us and have access to these classes. So, the first 1,000 Who Culture subscribers to click the link in the description below will be given a one month free trial on Skillshare so that you can explore your creativity too. Just click the link in the description below and if you are one of the first 1,000 to do so, you will be given unlimited access to thousands of classes run by some truly wonderful teachers for an entire month for free. So if you are a creative pro like me, or a haphazard hobbyist, also like me, you too can get your creative juices flowing. Once again, a massive thank you to Skillshare, but for now, back to the video. Number six, Eccleston embarks on the promotion trail. In the run-up to Doctor Who's premiere on the 26th of March 2005, Christopher Eccleston embarked on the promotional trail for the new series. The return of Doctor Who was a big deal. There were billboards, specially shot trailers and teasers. Eccleston and Piper were front and centre in all of this promotion. On top of this, there was also media appearances on some stalwart British shows. Eccleston sat on the Blue Peter sofa to talk about how he felt about taking on such an iconic role, stating, I was very excited. I felt ready to take on something with that sort of responsibility because the scripts are that strong. He also appeared on a special Doctor Who themed episode of Mastermind to present the winner with the trophy. On being introduced by host John Humphreys as Doctor Who, Eccleston offhandedly quips, Well, for now. Throughout these appearances, he's effusive about what drew him to the role, the scripts, the monsters, and the importance of the Doctor. What nobody knew at this point, however, was that Eccleston had already filmed his final scene as the Doctor. Number 5. Rose airs, two days later, Eccleston is gone. On the 26th of March 2005, Doctor Who triumphantly returned to screens. Christopher Eccleston is the new Doctor Who. Not even the leak of the first episode or an interruption from Graham Norton could take the sheen off the staggering 10.81 million viewers that tuned in to watch Rose. Two days later, the tabloids published reports that Eccleston had already departed the series and the search for a new Doctor was on. The BBC responded to these rumours two days later on the 30th of March, stating that Eccleston left the role for fear of being typecast. It wasn't true. The following Monday, BBC Head of Drama and Commissioning Jane Tranter had to publicly apologise to Eccleston, stating that the BBC regrets not speaking to Christopher before it responded to the press questions on Wednesday the 30th of March. The BBC further regrets that it falsely attributed a statement to Christopher and apologises to him. It was a sour note that undercut the joy of Doctor Who being back on TV and more popular than ever. The casting of David Tennant and the series' increasing popularity certainly dispelled much of this unpleasantness. However, the BBC's decision to misquote Eccleston and upset him further is a real failing on their part, especially given how much work he did to promote the series. Number 4. Stories of onset troubles emerge in the years after Eccleston's departure the abrupt nature of Eccleston's departure and the poor handling of the announcement by the BBC has led to it being revisited in various interviews with the actor. In June 2010, Eccleston hit the headlines when, while promoting a drama about John Lennon, he was asked about his departure. In response, he stated that, I didn't enjoy the environment and the culture that we, the cast and crew, had to work in. I thought if I stay in this job, I'm going to have to blind myself to certain things that I thought were wrong. As an actor who is from a staunch working-class trade union background, it's unsurprising that he left rather than be complicit in a perceived toxic workplace. It's unclear if this refers to Series 1's overrunning shoots, Eccleston's rumoured disagreements with director Keith Boak, or something else entirely. 
In 2018, Eccleston elaborated further, suggesting that something had gone very badly wrong between when he excitedly emailed RTD to offer to play the Doctor and his eventual departure, stating, My relationship with my three immediate superiors, the showrunner, the producer and co-producer, broke down irreparably during the first block of filming and it never recovered. They lost trust in me and I lost faith and trust and belief in them. Number 3. Eccleston meets with Moffat for Day of the Doctor in his autobiography, Eccleston feels that Russell T Davies didn't quite know what he wanted from the Doctor, but is incredibly complimentary of Stephen Moffat, saying that his scripts delivered my best work, bringing me closer to finally knowing exactly who the Doctor was than any other time during the shoot. It's no surprise that he was open to meeting Moffat about appearing in 2013's 50th anniversary special The Day of the Doctor. Ultimately, Eccleston turned the role down because he felt it didn't do justice to the Ninth Doctor. He's glad he did because it left room for John Hurt's phenomenal turn as the War Doctor, whom Eccleston believes is a far better actor than me. It was a promising first step towards Eccleston donning the leather jacket once more, but the role still held a great deal of trauma for the actor. Furthermore, Eccleston's struggles with mental health and body dysmorphia were intrinsically linked with the role, observing in the autobiography that, People love the way I look in that series, but I was very ill. The reward for that illness was the part, and therein lies the perpetuation of the whole sorry situation. Number 2. Eccleston begins attending conventions Five years after the huge 50th anniversary celebrations, Christopher Eccleston made his first convention appearance. Rather than a full-on Doctor Who convention, it was the London Film and Comic Con, and fans could get their photo taken with the Ninth Doctor for the princely sum of £95. Eccleston's appearances on the convention circuit also opened up the opportunities for him to bump into other Doctor actors like Matt Smith, with their very tactile and lovely meeting going viral on social media. Aside from the obvious financial gain, Eccleston was clearly attracted to the convention circuit by the opportunity to meet his fans. In a 2016 video for BBC Raw to discuss the A-word, Eccleston talks with fan Gerard Groves about the series Autism and is visibly moved when Groves talks about the impact his portrayal of the Doctor had on his childhood. It chimes with Eccleston's own reflections on the impact of the role on those kids that were growing up in 2005, watching him as the Ninth Doctor, stating, Everywhere I go, Cornwall, Belfast, Glasgow, I now get people of a certain age, mid-twenties, coming up to me. You are my doctor, they tell me. Number 1. If you want me back, get me on my own. As Eccleston continued to make convention appearances, he came into contact with Big Finish chairman Jason Haig Ellery at the Gallifrey One convention in early 2020. Since that fateful meeting, Eccleston has recorded a full 12 episode series as the Ninth Doctor, with another one on the way. It's certainly a positive sign that he's been able to move on from the damage and strain that playing the part put upon him. As for a potential return in the 60th anniversary, it's a bit more complicated than that. At the Supernova convention in Melbourne, Eccleston put out an open offer to the BBC. If you want me back, get me on my own. With rumours of a potential anniversary anthology series with past Doctors, he may get his wish. And what better tribute to Christopher Eccleston, the man who re-established Doctor Who and ensured its continuing legacy, than by having him return in 2023, 20 years after the show was recommissioned. And there you have it. If you can think of any other juicy details, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of Riversong herself, goodbye, sweetie.